يلا يا اوسا تمرين بدا نروح نمشي اه والله قلت له تعالى يلا الناس جم فقال لي مين دول؟ قلت لهم كبوا خلاص مين دول ايه؟ قمت اقول قلت له اقول الاوضه بتغرق يلا بقى قوم نبينا ليه؟ ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور فولوينج اس نو ذس كان ميك جود سيشنز ذات يو كان سيند تو اول ذا بيبول ان امريكا اول اوفر ذا وورلد مستر حسين ده سفاح وفي جي يا اخي ترانسليت السفاح ايزي نمبر هاي كل سو ام ليتس ستارت وذ يور نيم سو سو واتس يور نيم ماي نيم از حسين عبد الدين اند وير يو فروم ام اي ام فروم ايجيبت اند ام وين ديد يو ستارت بلاينج سوكر I started playing soccer when I was around eight years old. I was a kid who at some point of his life, when my parents were getting a divorce, I was just looking for something to put all my energy into. It was just like a simple getaway from everything. My grandfather was like a father to me. Um, he just got me like a goalkeeper's kit on his way back from a business trip. He just got me the shoes, shirt, the gloves. So I was like, I'll give it a try. I got scouted to the team the very first day. I was training with the keeper's coach and I was diving for the ball as if like I was diving into the water. Coach came up to me and said, Q, on this side. From there, the, the head coach of the national team watched me play. The next thing we knew, we got a call, you're we on the squad. To me, it was like, oh my God, is this for real? You know, is this really happening? And uh, my dad was really happy that it was my career. He's like, I know you're going to quit at some point and just work with me. I kept training day and night, day and night, all on my own. I was offered a scholarship to a D2 school in Florida and I took it. I played for a semester um, and I dislocated my knee. It was one of the worst injuries I'd ever gotten. I was starting to get a grip of everything and then boom, it was all gone. And when just things seemed really tough, I lost my grandfather. The figure that I took as my father, the figure that I looked up to in my entire life, it just felt like everything now was gone. I went to college back home and I just started working with my dad. And at that point, I just didn't think I was, I was ever gonna get back into sports. I just felt like I wasn't going anywhere. I just gave up soccer then. It was, it was one of the most difficult decisions I've ever had to make in my life. But it was a must. My sister kept nagging me every single day to join her, to train at the club in the morning. It was just functional training back then. I started training with a friend of mine, and all I was doing was honestly like researching, reading articles, and I was just implementing the workouts we got from soccer. It just like ignited something in me. I was really passionate at developing athletes. Like I got the opportunity abroad in the States and Spain to, to get 
physically ready in ways I never, I never knew was possible. I saw how skilled players are here, and I thought to myself, I actually should help develop and giving them the opportunity that they would never get anywhere else. But my friend was like, uh, he had a different vision and I had my own vision, so I decided to take off and I started Ignite. When I started Ignite, I didn't have any money, but I knew where I was going. We started off with six people in a borrowed gym space, and that jumped up to 60 people in a matter of weeks. Like, you could see the change in character and how they looked at themselves, how they felt. Everyone would come up to us and be like, oh, you've changed my life, I don't know how to thank you. I started getting investors. We started opening other branches. I started traveling to take certifications, and I just wanted to know as much as I could about the human body and mind. Let's go, Hussein. Let's go. 180, 190 kilos. It was difficult at the beginning to have people accept what we're doing as science. I didn't care how much money I was making at the beginning. I had to train athletes for free. I had to work my ass off almost 20 hours a day to get people to understand what we're doing. I would sleep two to three hours a night to program for my athletes. There were times where I would sit in my car and, and I'd just cry, not seeing a way forward. But I, I like to think things take time to, to happen. It's all about hard work and just giving it time. I got a call from an athlete and he started training with me and his global ranking just jumped so far up. His own coaches didn't believe it was even possible. It just sparked something in me. Wow, this is what I want. These are the people I really want to help. I just don't want to just be another trainer. I want to be the trainer. I want to be the one who specializes in, in training these pros, who specializes in changing lives. Players I trained started standing out. People started asking where they were training. Word of mouth started to work. And then one thing just led to another, and I went from getting the top players in the league to, to the soccer teams themselves. My dad was completely against it, actually. He was like, are you fucking insane? Are you out of your mind? Quitting your family business to start from scratch? Are you insane? It's something you already have. You're not gonna start all over again. He didn't understand I was trying to build something on my own. And so he just cut me off. In our culture in Egypt, there are certain jobs or certain careers that are sort of an embarrassment. Coaching was one of them. Two, three. It didn't make a difference at all. I was helping more people prosper in their work, in their careers. Um, and that in itself to me was like really fulfilling. I've lived most of my life with my grandfather. Like he was a great person, he was a great man. He was always giving back to society. He was always giving back to everyone around him. I saw how fulfilling it was to him and it just like grew that into me, I guess. When I first started Ignite, I was training one pro athlete. Today, my team and I, we train over 200. The feeling I get when, when one of my athletes just advances in their career, it's big. It's bigger than the game itself to me.